Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. If you're looking to buy a good looking phone and your budget is limited to about 150 bucks, you don't have many options. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way right now. But there's one phone which stands out from the crowd, which is the Cubot P20. Excellent screen, very good color schemes and 4000 milliamp hours of battery. So is that the right phone for you? Let's find out. Okay guys, so let's start with design and build quality first. If you wanna have a little bit more extra time with the hands on with the phone, please check my full unboxing, which I'm gonna link in the description down below. But now I'm just gonna sum it up for you. The phone is available in three different color combinations. The first one is all black, the second one is the denim, this is the blue one, and the third one is the twilight. It's a combination of black and purple if you're into that kind of thing. But now I chose the denim and I've put an appropriate t-shirt to go with it, guys. So design and build quality, I mean, you have to be a fan of the notch because this phone has one. It's not very big as any other phones, really. Um, and it doesn't really stand on the way on the screen because the screen is 6.2 inches So no problems about the notch at least in my opinion and the design man The design is absolutely beautiful The back cover is made of plastic and you have a case included in the box as well So even if you drop it no worries whatsoever, but this has some sort of you know very distinct blue color which changes depending on the light that you put uh, under it and the thing is that the sides of the phone are so shiny and nicely done that I couldn't decide in the beginning whether they were made of metal or made of plastic but uh, spending some time with the phone I think that they're made of plastic although I'm not quite sure but let me tell you one thing this is the Poco phone over here which costs about 300 pounds and the build quality of the Cubot is actually better than the Poco phone so design wise I'm gonna give this phone a huge thumbs up now, in terms of security, unfortunately, you do not have any kind of face unlock, which is unfortunate, but you have a good fingerprint reader at the back, which is positioned just where your fingerprint lies over here, guys. It's not the fastest one in the world, but it definitely gets the job done. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the screen a little bit. 6.2 inch 1080p plus LCD IPS panel, of course, with the notch and notification LED at the top over here. But man, this screen is absolutely beautiful. Yes, I mean, you don't have any you know, options to tweak the screen colors as well as saturation, but it's perfectly calibrated. And I can easily say, pay attention over here, this screen is better than the Pocophone, which costs 300 pounds and the Nubia Red Magic, which costs 400 pounds, guys. You don't believe me? Check this one out. Okay, guys, so I've got the Cubot P20 on the left, the Nubia Red Magic, and the Pocophone F1. All of those phones, 1080p plus screens and LCD IPS panels. 120 pounds, 400 pounds, 260 to 300 pounds. And let's turn the lights down and see what's the difference, especially in the black levels. Okay, so that's the ultimate black test now, guys. As you can see that the deeper blacks are on the Cubot P20 over here. You can see that the black magic is absolutely ridiculous in the IPS glow over here. And over here, the Pocophone is kind of okay in the middle. So surprise, surprise, the Cubot P20 has the better display of the bunch. I can't really believe that. Okay, so moving on to the battery department over here. 4000 milliamp hours of battery, guys. And let's start first with the recharge times. I'm gonna have to look at my nose because I can't remember so much numbers. Now, 30 minutes is gonna give you 22% of charge, one hour 46%, two hours 89%, but for a full charge, you need three hours with this phone, guys, as well as the charging port is micro USB as well. Now, what about the battery life? Let's have a look at my screenshots now. Now, the battery life really depends on your usage, guys. Check this out. 5 hours and 20 minutes Wi-Fi mostly over here. Now, the phone is running quite hot when pushed really hard. 47 degrees over here, guys. Can you imagine? Now, the other battery statistics. 3 hours, 33 minutes. That's 4G mostly and a little bit of gaming as well. 
I've got six hours of screen on time over here. Can you imagine the difference? Six hours, 18 minutes over here and four hours, 36 minutes. I can see that I'm using some maps over here, guys. So basically battery life really depends on how hard you push this phone. If you leave it alone, you can get a solid six hours. But if you push it too hard, you're getting three and a half, four hours of screen on time. Now, when it comes down to software, you're getting a pure stock Android 8. The security patch is from 5th of August 2018. Uh, if you're familiar with the MTK phones, you're not going to get many updates, unfortunately. And although the phone is, you know, quite fast and responsive, there are quite a few features that are actually missing. For example, you're getting no notifications whatsoever. You have to swipe down like that to see if you have a notification or you have to check the notification LED. But on this side over here, you're not going to get your notifications unlike some other phones. As well as you don't have any, you know, notch settings whatsoever. So basically, no matter what you do, you're not getting a full screen experience every time for example when you're gaming or watching a video this part is cut off over here and you're getting nothing over here guys so that's a bummer as well as you don't have any you know navigation uh, options over here for the system ui now i've changed the look of these buttons and i've changed their order um, with a specific applications i've got a video covering that particular issue but many phones actually don't have this setting whatsoever especially the stock android one the other thing which is missing from that build is the percentage of the battery over here you just don't get it guys you have to swipe down not only once but twice in order to see how much battery life you've got left why now it's funny thing to mention that this phone comes with 64 gigs of storage with 4 gigabytes of ram the same as the google pixel 3 which costs about a thousand Pounds. Of course, the performance is not the same. You can see my scores over here on the Geekbench. And when we come down to gaming now, guys, you can see that on the Kasja, I'm getting only 18 FPS. And even on Epic Citadel, I'm getting 37.9 FPS, which is relatively low. And unfortunately, that translates into the gaming as well, which is, you know, barely acceptable, guys. Now, a good example of the gaming will be Angry Birds. And you can see what I was talking about, that you're not getting a full screen display. You have this curvature over here, but on this side, it's just cut off like that. And you can see that the display drivers which go along the screen, uh, which go underneath the notch as well, are kind of a little bit in the way, guys. So let me just load up this level and show you what I'm talking about, that the gaming is barely acceptable. It's quite slow to load up pretty much anything you can see how much time it takes for this level to load guys and you can see some of the luck over here let me eject some of the birds you can see that it doesn't really run that smooth i mean i'm running 60 fps at the moment it's really not terrible but it's not good either so gaming performance yeah it's not very good unfortunately guys and the phone heats up quite a lot over here you can i mean i've just started the game and you can see that the phone is actually heating up already over here which is not a good sign really okay guys so moving on to the audio department you do have a 3.5 millimeter jack which sounds okay nothing spectacular but definitely you know a little bit probably a little bit better than what you might expect from a 120 pound phone so headphone jack no problems with that However, the speaker at the bottom is a mono speaker and it sounds, uh, well, not very good. Let's have a listen. Okay, so let's take a listen of that speaker, guys. Maximum volume over here. One, two, three. Yep, if you can clear my voice clearly, which means that the speaker is really not doing a great job over here. It's very easily blockable over here, guys. And you can see that it's not allowed at all unfortunately okay guys and that brings me to the final department which is the cameras at the front you've got a 13 megapixel camera and the maximum video resolution is unfortunately 720p only you don't have any sort of stabilization and the video format is 3gp 
which you know i've seen worse but this is not good at all guys absolutely no details and when it comes down to the photos of the front facing camera unfortunately uh it's going to be like one in five photos which is going to be useful in perfect lighting conditions so the front facing camera just forget about it so what about the rear cameras qvot is claiming that they've put a samsung sensor 20 megapixel one plus 2 megapixel depth sensor for those bokeh photos. Now, needless to say, 2 megapixel for bokeh doesn't really look good at all. And again, the video is just 1080p, no stabilization, and 3GP, which has a killer compression, guys. So basically, you're getting no detail uh, from that video. But I'm very happy to report that actually the photos from this phone, man, some of them you wouldn't really believe they were taken on a 120 pound phone of course every now and then you're gonna get you know the <laughs> a bad one but man most of those photos are surprisingly good now when it comes down to low light you won't expect miracles and there are quite a lot of grain going on but still the photos are you know usable i would say and now the final part of my video is going to be the vlogging spectrum that's a new thing that i'm doing on my channel basically it's a scoring system from zero to a 50 and the spectrum is where the phone is gonna land somewhere in between i can imagine for this particular phone so i'm gonna give scores to individual components of this phone guys which are going to be from zero to five zero being terrible and five being absolutely marvelous so with design and build quality i can't give this phone more than a three because although i really love the design and build quality it's mostly made of plastic and the bottom chin is quite big and you have a notch as well so design and build quality three out of five the next category is security which includes the fingerprint reader and face unlock and since you don't have face unlock and the fingerprint reader is kind of average it gets 2 out of 5. Now the battery and charging I'm gonna give it 2 out of 5 as well because the battery is between 3 and 6 hours of screen on time which is you know not bad but for a 4000 milliamp hours of battery I was expecting a little bit more and the charging time is atrocious at 3 hours. The screen gets an easy 4 out of 5 because that's one of the best 1080p LCD screens ever made. I really like the screen, so 4 out of 5 over here. The next category is speakers and unfortunately this phone fails in that department, so I'm gonna give this model speaker a 1 out of 5. The headphone jack is there and the quality is about average, so I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 5. The software gets 3 out of 5 as well because although it's running stock Android and it's nice and optimized, it's lacking some core features that I like. Performance unfortunately gets to because although yeah the phone is nice and smooth most of the time the gaming performance is not good and it runs hot most of the time. Now the next category is front facing camera and I'm gonna give this camera a 1 out of 5. It's pretty bad. And the rear camera I'm gonna give it a 3. Although the video is not good sometimes the pictures taken with this phone are absolutely surprising for a 120 pound phone guys. And the total score is... 24 out of 50 on the vlogging spectrum. How good is that? <laughs> I have no idea. I have to evaluate more phones in the future. So we're going to see about that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And let me know what do you think of my new vlogging spectrum scoring system. See you in the next one. Adios.